Hello. What do I want? <laughs> I want Cadbury's. The Cadbury Show. Hello, Elsie. How do you like my suntan? I've been working on a farm. You, Reginald Goldsworthy, on a farm? What do you do, sow wild oats? Certainly not. I milk the cows and everything. <laughs> I bet you surprised the ducks and the chickens. <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I milked a cow. I was really... It was really an accident. Well, what happened, Elsie? Well, I dropped a shilling on the barn floor and was on my hands and knees looking for it when I reached up to switch on the light, see? Oh, I say. Well, I got an ear and a half full. <laughs> you mean a glass and a half? No, that's Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate. All right, you are. <laughs> In each half pound of dairy milk, there's a glass and a half of milk. Milk, fresh, creamy milk, smoothly blended with Cadbury quality chocolate. That's the secret of its popularity. For a chocolate with palate appeal, favor that flavor-famous favorite dairy milk. You'll agree... Reggie, Reggie. Yes, Elsie? Say that again. <laughs> you mean flavor that favor... Flex... Mm. No, no. Flavor that flavor... It's flavor fam that flavor famous flavor it. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Elsie, there's one sure way of getting smooth, creamy dairy milk. Call at your chocolate counter, find that shining purple and gold wrapper, then say what more people everywhere are saying, I want Cadbury's. Elsie, I've come to a decision. What, men? It's time you went first for marriage. Well, what hope have I got? Even the bookmakers can't get him to settle. <laughs> but what he needs is a little wooing. You ought to smarten yourself up a bit. Show off your girlish charms. <laughs> you think so, men? Well, of course, Elsie. Wear smarter clothes. Reveal a little. All right. From now on, I'll stop wearing veils. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, the idea. I and you'll have to do something about your figure. You haven't exactly got the H look, you know. Well, the only letter of the alphabet I resemble is O. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll put you on a diet. No pastry, no, pastry, no potatoes, no potato. and keep away from anything half-baked. Well, how can I woo purse if I have to keep away from it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, purse accepted. But the thing is, you've got to win him, Elsie. Don't forget Eve tempted Adam with an apple. Yes, but Adam didn't have an appetite like my purse. <laughs> look, look, here he comes now. Elsie, you've got to nail him down. This is a matrimonial campaign. Oh, I don't know how to start. Oh, it's easy. As soon as he comes in, flatter him. Right home, men. Hello, Jelly Bean. <laughs> oh! Hey, Elsie, what did you do that for? Well, you said to flatten him, men. <laughs> no, flatter him, I said. Oh, dear, dear, that's a bad start. You'll have to win him some other way. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, look, look, he's coming too. Ah, uh, he's nearly round. Don't be personal, Min. I like him like that. <laughs> Where am no, I? No, no, lie still, personal. I'll bathe your head. Uh, Hello, dear. Hill courting. Oh, it's Miss Plunge. What's wrong with poor Mr. Pear? Elsie yes, knocked him out with a saucepan. Oh, that sort of thing went out with the Stone Age. I catch my men with charm. <laughs> oh, how do you like my new dress? Don't you think it's a cute little number? Little number? <laughs> it's so small, it's more like a decimal. <laughs> oh, how did I come to pass out? Oh, don't bother to tell me. It must have been when Miss Plunge came in. There, 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 personal. You lie still and rest. You've had a busy day. Yeah, Jellybean. I didn't knock off till half past ten this morning. Oh. It takes too much out of you reading all those situations vacant. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give him some nourishment, Elsie? You know, food. Oh, yes, 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 then, yes. Look, Purse, I baked this for you. It's your favourite apple pie, triple decker. Thanks, Jellybean. And how are the boys treating you, Miss Plunge? Well. Oh, wonderfully. I went to a civic reception with Harry on Wednesday night. I'm mad about Harry. Of course, only on Wednesday. I went to a civic reception once. It was for two celebrities. 
Did you meet them both? Yes, but I liked Burke better than Wills. <laughs> oh, well, come on, Percy, eat up. I baked it just for you. Somehow I lose my appetite when Miss Plunger's around. Yeah, she puts me off my food, too. <laughs> How dull you are. Don't you eat if you don't want to, Perth. After all, it might spoil your physique. And I've always thought you had an attractive figure. Uh, calm down, Perth. When Miss Plunge says a man has an attractive figure, she's talking about his bank account. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how droll you are. I thought Mr. Perth might flex his big, strong muscles and do a few odd jobs for me. Would I? Let's go. <laughs> Purse, come out of the refrigerator. <laughs> Gee, but it's cold inside. Now, listen, don't you get used to Purse running after you, Miss Plunge. We're getting married soon. <gasps> oh, Purse will come home after a hard day's shirk. I, I mean, work. <laughs> and he'll come home and he'll put his feet up on the mantelpiece and pot around in the garden. How and can he... I with my feet still up on the mantelpiece? <laughs> Oh, Miss Elsie, you're such a comfort. Now I don't dread my old age. Come on, Pert. Cut off the plane. Minnie, I've lost him. Uh, don't worry, Elsie. There are other ways to a man's heart apart from through his stomach. Yes, ma'am, but with Pert, I have so much to work on. <laughs> Special gift package for Miss Elsie Smith. Oh, Donald Cameron. Special gift for me. What is it? A song from me. Oh. My voice is a heaven-sent gift. I wondered why you were so wrapped up in it. <laughs> I know that we meet every night And we couldn't have changed since the last time To my joy and delight It's a new kind of love at first sight Though it's you and it's I all the time Every meeting's a marvelous pastime You're increasingly sweet So whenever we happen to meet I greet you with a song in my heart. I behold your adorable face, just a song at the start. But it soon is a hymn to your grace when the music swells. I'm touching your hand It tells that you're standing near and At the sound of your voice Heaven opens its portals to me Can I help but rejoice that a song such as ours came to be But I always knew I would live life through With a song in my heart For you Cadbury's Dairy Milk at your chocolate counter, and you'll enjoy the smoothest, creamiest chocolate of all. Only Dairy Milk has the goodness and full flavor of a glass and a half of pure, fresh, full cream milk in each half pound. Only Dairy Milk has the solid nourishment of Cadbury quality chocolate in each thick, chunky square. Yes, Cadbury's Dairy Milk is the best chocolate bargain of all, and it's so good for you. Buy a block tomorrow. Dairy Milk Chocolate. It's today's tastiest reason for I want Cadbury's. Why, hello, 
Mr. Hercules. Hello, Miss Elsie. <laughs> Lovely day for it. You know those travelling pages I had all up the left side yesterday? They're gone. Oh, well, I'm so glad. Now they're all down the right side. <laughs> I've got locomotor stacksia. Locomotor stacksia? How do you know? I whistle at crossings. <laughs> The doctors are stumped. My doctor isn't much good either. He spent six months trying to cure a patient of yellow jaundice. Didn't he cure him? No, the patient turned out to be a Chinese. <laughs> Dr. Macquarie told me I was in for a case of dyspepsia. I said that was nice, but I wouldn't be lucky enough to win it. <laughs> you know, I think I'll send Purse to see your doctor, Mr. Hercules. What's wrong with Purse? Well, he says he's got too much blood in his alcohol stream. <laughs> Has he been to the doctors lately? Yes, he went last night, but he says he's never going back again. He doesn't know what he's missing. <laughs> what happened? Well, he went into the surgery and the doctor told him to say 99. Some fool out in the waiting room kept raising his bed, and before he knew it, he'd bought three x-ray machines and a packet of scalpels. <laughs> I've been entertaining the doctors down at the hospital. Entertaining? What do you do? The doctors have to guess what's wrong with me in 20 questions. <laughs> that stumps them. Ah, oh, poor Mr. Hercules. You know, you shouldn't be so miserable. What you need is cheering up. Now, look, I'll tell you a funny riddle. Are you listening? Yes. Well, an old man stepped out on the road and the driver of a car put on the brakes. Whose children are they? <laughs> I have no idea. The car skids. <laughs> See? The car skids. No. Car skids. Oh, See? Oh, 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 Very funny. Very amusing. Oh, 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 o
One, your old favorite, smooth, creamy dairy milk chocolate, and two, heaps of selected almonds toasted crisp and crunchy. Don't miss out on a treat. Try a block of Cadbury's Toasted Almond Chocolate tomorrow. Cadbury's Toasted Almond is full of satisfying goodness, full of the flavor that will make you say, I want Cadbury's. And I say to you, join the anti-social party and you'll get what you deserve. Ah, you stretch up the river. <laughs> What on earth are you doing up there on that piano stool, Purse? Oh, I'm just rehearsing my speech for the next rally. And I say to you, I'm against tax. But, Purse, you must have tax. We can manage without. <laughs> I bought a pair of strides today and the bloke said that'll be two quid plus tax. I said, I don't want the tax, mate. I'll tie them up with string. <laughs> tax on trousers? Yeah, down with them. <laughs> We've got a new slogan. I'm a dead hot one on slogans. My latest is, men, don't be coaxed into working. Put your foot down and scrub it. Now, there's an idea. Our secretary reckons everyone should have a car, even if it means breaking into the factories and handing them out himself. Gee, that's a great idea. Yeah, and we're going ahead with it, as soon as he's released. <laughs> now, look, first, why don't you do something useful with this political party of yours? Useful? Yeah. Listen, Joe, our secretary, is advocating easier working conditions for stokers. Well, that's something. Yeah. His missus comes home from the foundry tired out. <laughs> and that reminds me, I want Elsie to go around and massage her back tonight. Whatever for? Joe'll be livid if his wife's not fit for work in the morning. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know where else he is. I can't find her. Well, here's Reg Goldsworthy. Perhaps he'll help. Hey, Reg, do you know where we'll find Elsie? Why, yes. Tonight you'll find Elsie in Alaska. She's the belle of the Yukon. The Yukon? Yeah. The last thing she said was, anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> We find Elsie is the belle of the Yukon in the snow-covered, rip-roaring, rumpus-raising frontier town of Sleepy Time Gulch. The belle is sweeping away the snow as a stranger rides into town. There's no business like snow business. There's no... Hello there, stranger. Hi. That's the first time I've seen a horse with handlebars. I'm a cowboy. Well, that doesn't mean you're supposed to ride cows. I've come up north to do some trapping for skins. I'm after ermine and minks. Oh, yes. I've been doing some trapping myself. What have you caught? Two cowhounds and a sheriff. <laughs> Just a minute. Your face is familiar. Well, it ought to be. I've had it a long time. <laughs> no, um, aren't you the belle of the Yukon? <laughs> How did you guess? you got such a big tongue. <laughs> anyway, allow me to introduce myself. I am Purse the Pot Shop. Purse the Pot Shop? Isn't there a price on your head? Yeah. Five pounds. <laughs> well, you want to take it. You won't get a better offer. <laughs> I'm warning you, Belle. I'm a dangerous crook. Only this morning I held up a stagecoach. And what did you get out of it? A strained back. Those stagecoaches are heavy. <laughs> Bill, are you there, Bill? Who's this a coming after you? Oh, that's Minnie. We do an act together down at the saloon. Yeah? Which one of you throws the fish? Ooh. <laughs> it's so cold up here in the Yukon. I'll have to get a fur coat. I mean, why don't you get a real seal skin instead? They're waterproof. Are you sure? Well, you never see a seal carrying an umbrella. <laughs> Well, who's your friend, Bell? Oh, this is Purse the Pot Shot. He's tough. Yeah? Well, if you're so tough, reach for your gun. Oh, I wait till I take off my shoes. I shoot with my toes. And what do you do with your hands? Put them over my ears. I can't stand the noise. <laughs> Say, Bell, how would you like me to give you this fur coat? Oh, Purse, isn't that nice? It's genuine ermine, I think. You think? Can't you tell if it's dyed? Well, it must have. It stopped breathing. <laughs> Just a minute. Where did you get it? Oh, I swiped it from a room on the 10th floor of a hotel, then I made me get away in the car. Now, wait on. How could you get a car up to the 10th floor of a hotel? I kept it in second gear all the way. <laughs> now, look, Purse. It's no good you trying to be abandoned up here in the Yukon. I know because I tried it and there's no money in it. 
You were a bandit. Yes. I used to say, stick them down. You should have said, stick them up. Should I? Oh, no wonder business was so bad. <laughs> you should see the notches in the handle on Bell's gun. Notches, eh? Mm. Are you a dead shot? No. I just love whittling. <laughs> she used to fight the Indians. She shot Chief Standing Bull. You mean Chief Sitting Bull. You don't know your Indians. You don't know where I shot him. <laughs> so you've seen the Indians bite the dust, eh? Oh, yes. You know, they've got the craziest idea of bud diet. But there are no Indians around these parts now. Oh, no? Well, just look. There's a smoke signal. Oh, don't be silly, men. If there's any Indians within 100 miles of here, I'm May West. <laughs> oh, come up and see me sometime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look, what does that smoke signal say? I don't know. A school I failed in smoke. That says, chimneys clean cheap. Oh. Well, let's go into the saloon. Through this door. Oh. oh, wait till I open it. What would you like, Bill? A scotch. What kind of scotch? Butter scotch. <laughs> well, I'd like a glass of water. I'm driving. Minnie, this is the Yukon, and you're supposed to order a stiff drink. Right, oh. Give me a glass of water and put some starch in it. <laughs> Bill. I'm a wanted man. Everywhere I go, every minute of the day, men are seeking me, chasing me, wanting me. Oh, wish I was in your shoes. <laughs> men, men, that's all you ever think about. I'm taking notes of her purse. She hates men. And so I should. Last night I went round to my boyfriend's house and all the lights were on and I saw him kissing another woman. But I fixed them. What did you do? I put all the lights out so they couldn't see what they were doing. <laughs> Have you had much experience with men, Bill? Oh, yes. I used to be the romantical heroine in the pictures. But you know, Percy's not all as cracked up to me. All day I'd, I'd make love with Rudolph Valentino, and then I'd go home. And the next day I'd make love with John Barrymore, and then I'd go home. And next day I'd make love with John Gilbert. And then I'd go home. Well, what didn't you like about that? Going home. <laughs> but, Purse, I think you're a wonderful hunk of man. Do you really think I'm handsome? No, but when I'm in the mood, anything does. <laughs> Gee, Belle, looking at you, I can see you've got something that every man wants in his arms. My feminine charms? No, muscles. <laughs> Listen. You can't talk to me like that. Tomorrow morning I shall meet you in the city park and you may have your choice of weapons. But, Bill, I don't know how to duel. Well, in that case, when I meet you, there's only one thing for us to do. What's that? We'll nick. Bill, don't throw yourself at first like this. He's not the kind you should marry. What other kind of man is there? Oh, Minnie, first the pot needs me. He he, he wants mothering. Aye, aye. I'll say, pot I'll shot's say. the name. <laughs> what says here, first the pot? All right, pot shot. <laughs> Fussy in your old age. Yes. Look, at dear, oh. I'll say it's a pity. It's a pity they didn't smother him at birth. Mothering, not smothering. <laughs> You're right, Bill. I want you to help me in my troubles. Of course I will, first. What sort of trouble would you like to get into? I reckon I ought to be hitched. <laughs> you look silly tied up with all the horses. <laughs> no. I mean, we ought to be married, Bill. Well, uh, what makes you think you might have a chance? Why, when I walk into a room full of men, they stampede. What do you do? Lock the door so they can't get away. <laughs> Look, I don't trust him, Bill. He didn't get those dirty, shifty eyes watching table tennis. <laughs> I'll try him out, Min. Listen, Purse. Do you take after your father? How do you mean? 
Are you a gambling man? Because your father must have been to let you live. <laughs> oh, sure, I'm a gambler. I'll stake anything on a game of cards. Right. We'll play cards. If I win, you marry me, and if you win, I'll marry you. <laughs> that seems fair enough. Uh, what are we going to play, bridge? No, 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 let's play a friendly game. Men, uh, see what the boys in the back room want. Me? What, do you think I'm crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I'll deal. <laughs> Do you want a shuffle? No, thanks. I'm quite comfortable. <laughs> there. Five for you and five for me. Well, go on. Look at your hands. Who do you think I am? A fortune teller? <laughs> I mean the cards. How many do you want to buy? I don't want to buy any, thanks. I, I've got a pack of my own at home. <laughs> well... Here's 500 bucks to look at you. Flatterer, there's no charge. <laughs> I should think not. <laughs> I'm talking about your cards. Uh, Do you want to keep the ones you got? Oh, they're all the same. But I think I'll keep some of them for swaps. <laughs> all the same? Let's see them. There, five aces. <laughs> Two aces of spades, one ace of clubs. Ah, oh, you beat me. I've only got four kings of hearts. <laughs> well, um, here's another king of hearts. Well, uh, that makes me the winner. No. Shoot me. I cheated. I've got a better fate for you. The rope. The rope? This salon is the courthouse, the preaching house and the gallows. Hand me that rope. No, no, not the rope. I won the game, so I decide your fate. The rope. What are you going to do with the rope? Now, get away. I'm just no. going to pull it. Uh, no. I'm calling the folks to our wedding. <laughs> The moment you bite into a block of Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate, you taste the deep, satisfying flavor of milk. Milk, fresh, creamy milk. That's because there's a glass and a half of that milk in each half pound of dairy milk. Then those thick, chunky squares are made doubly satisfying with the nourishing goodness of Cadbury quality chocolate. Enjoy Dairy Milk Chocolate whenever you're near your favorite chocolate counter. Favor that flavor famous favorite. We won't go into that again. For smooth, melting, mellow flavor, for nourishing goodness, choose Dairy Milk by saying, I want Cadbury. In tonight's Cadbury show, you heard Minnie Lovers Minnie, Kevin Brennan as our old friend Purse, Frank Strain as Mr. Hercules, Audrey.